Hello children. In today's class, we are going to study how to read charts, tables and schedules. So, uh, if you see graphs, charts and uh, tables, they provide uh, major benefits. That's they can quickly provide uh, uh, information related to trends and uh, comparisons by allowing for a global view of the data. And also it allows the members of the audience who may be less versed in numerical analysis to follow the information and understand the presentation more completely. And the benefits that or the advantages that we enjoy by reading charts, you know, they are numerous. Charts actually they provide a visual version of data which can be helpful for visual learners and uh, uh, you know uh, it allows members uh, uh, to analyze the information in an in-depth way and uh, often the best way to convey information is not through visual representations. When it comes to statistical data tools like graphs, tables and charts are ways of communicating information quickly and effectively. The process of uh, changing raw data into visual information is called data visualization. So what is uh, data visualization? The process of changing raw data into visual forms is called data visualization. So data visualization simplifies complex data into forms that are easily understandable and usable. So a chart is one of the various ways in which data is represented through a graphic or a visual. Okay, so there are several kinds of charts such as bar charts, pie charts, flow charts, column charts, line charts, etc. The charts are used to read, understand and interpret information present in visual form. So we are studying reading charts. So reading charts is a chapter. So how to uh, read charts? Charts are used to read understand and interpret information present in visual form. Now I, I am sharing a chart here. So this is a this is a graphic uh, uh, no, representation of uh, the global extreme poor percentage in year 2010. The top five countries with the largest share of the glo global extreme poor in the year 2010 is represented using a chart okay so you can see this chart this chart is taken from the annual reported of the united nations millennium development goals published in 2014 so as the title of the graphic explains it represents the percentage of extremely poor people living in the five most poverty stricken countries in the world. Okay, so what does this chart represent? Represents the percentage of extremely poor people living in the five most poverty stricken countries in the world. So this graphic uses a pie chart. So this is a pie chart to visually represent the data. So what is a pie chart? A pie chart is useful because it can visually represent the proportion of each type of data when compared to the whole. It is called a pie chart because it resembles a pie that has been cut into pieces. So the graphic in this, uh, you, this uh, image uses a particular type of pie chart called a donut. 
chart where the central portion of the graphic has been left blank. So you can see the central portion is left blank and the remaining um, the numericals has to be filled but since I couldn't fill I have typed the numericals here. So on the slice these you have to assume or imagine as slices. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So on the slice of the chart the numerical percentage represents it represents has to be printed but I, I couldn't print. Uh, for example the slice uh, in this side this represents India which is 32.9 percentage. So this right hand side slice represents India with 32.9 percentage. And on reading this graphic, you will notice that almost one third of the poorest people in the world live in India because as I said, this represents India, 32.9 percentage represent India. So by looking at this graph and the percentage given here, uh, you learn that one third of the poorest people in the world live in India. And China represent uh, China that is despite its economic progress is home to the second largest population of poor people. Okay, so China is 12.8. It should come here. And the three Asian countries represented on the graphic are India, China and the third one is Bangladesh. Together account for more than half that is 51 percentage of the world's poor people and another fact illustrated by the graphic is that uh, although populous countries like uh, India uh, and China have uh, large populations of poor people it is often the less populous countries like uh, Nigeria and uh, the Congo which account for the disproportionately large percentage of uh, the global poor. Okay, so this is what we learn from this graphic chart. And next, how to read tables. Uh, tables are one of the most commonly used means to visually organize information. See, a table consists of a number of horizontal rows. You can see number of horizontal rows and vertical columns, rows and columns in which the information to be read is provided. And here in this uh, table, uh, it's a very simple table, uh, one with uh, two columns and three rows. So two columns and three rows. So the first row which is called the header row. So this is called the header row is not counted as it is only used to display the column names. So listen carefully, this which is in green color, first row is called header row, H-E-A-D-E-R, header row. This is not counted as it is only used to display the column names. So column names, first column name, second column age. So for displaying more complex data, more columns and rows can be easily added. Okay, so here names are Susan, Arun, Philip and the ages are given. So let me share you the image of the second column, tabular table. See now we can examine this table. It provides information about their, their year of birth and the place of birth. If you see in previous table, only the name of the person and age is provided. And if you need more details, you can add more columns and rows. So the second table, year of birth and place of birth is also added. So we can, we can interpret it to find out the answers of the questions. If, there, if questions are given for exams, you can read the questions and you can find the answers for the questions from the table. Okay. For example, uh, which year Arun was born? If this was a question, you can easily look at the name Arun and year of birth is given. 
So you can write the answer 2001. So this is how we have to read and understand table. And next reading schedules. Okay. See a program or a schedule is a document which lists the details of functions like seminars, workshops and conferences. So the audience and the participants, uh, participants could be students, uh, teachers, research scholars of such functions. They are usually given copies of the schedule and this ensures that everyone knows about the order of events and the time allotted for uh, uh, each speaker or uh, uh, the, the source person's names, everything will be given. Technical session 5, 4. So everything is clearly provided in the schedule. So I have shared the image of a college seminar, national seminar invitation here. So this actually supplies quite a lot of information about the event to the participants. For instance, it provides answers to the questions like, you know, the dates. Uh, when are the dates? So, uh, dates 18, 19, February 2016, it is given. And what is the title of uh, the seminar? It is also given here. Indian Economy in the 21st Century, Emerging Issues and Challenges. And uh, the whole, the, which department hosts the seminar? Department of Economics. Uh, that is also given here. And uh, it is sponsored by who is the sponsor of this seminar? You will have this doubt or the question. And the sponsor for this seminar is UGC, that is University Grants Commission. And, you know, resource persons, resource persons are, are given here. Professor Midden, VP, resource person for the technical session uh, 6. And for 5, Dr. Sumalata and the chair. Paper presentations will be chaired by Dr. Salyama Job. So everything, all details are provided here. This is uh, this actually helps the participants to get you know answers to all their doubts of the queries that they have in mind. And next, we move on to the next topic: reading graphs. See, a graph is a diagrammatic representation of the relation between two sets of information or variable quantities. Graphs are usually plotted along two axes, the horizontal x-axis and the vertical y-axis. Okay. Uh, graphs are very effective in showing uh, how trends change over time. They can also be used to compare how two or more trends have developed over time and whether there is any correlation between them. So, uh, I will share the image of a graph here. So, distance from source and the vector perimeter. So, in this graph, In this graph, uh, the distance from source is plotted along the x-axis and width perimeter is plotted along the y-axis. This is how graphs are used to convey information. So, meet you in next class. Thank you.